uh, it could be like all script it could be next gen it could be anything yeah yeah and for example this is cerner or athena yeah. etna or any any other emr system yeah so if data is moving in the form of hl7 okay yeah. so this is hl7 data set that would be moving from here yeah. to here so we have two option one is hl7 other is fire which is yes. fast health care interoperability resource yes, so yes. this fire i will come back to this later but first our primary focus is in hl7 that is the more vast and uh, the widely used uh, protocol in this healthcare industry sure so we have three options we have three options from the system so if i show you an example for example this is practice management okay and this is ehr so always data would be moving from pm to ehr from practice management to ehr sometime let's say if this hospital is having a separate billing team who is taking care of their entire transaction okay so then we would be introducing this so let me mention billing machine now how the workflow is happening for example if this is a pm where hospital or practice is registering the patient so when a patient is registered here it should go to ehr so that ehr can understand that x patient comes in and this is the provider who has booked for that certain patient so in order to give them a resolution we would be moving back to the hl7 format now how the data is moving firstly data is moving from here to here so here the data would be moved in the form of xml in the form of a uh, json file in the form of a uh, j script so depending on the data set that would be moved it's actually the standard that would be learned in this engine so this is nothing but a interface engine who is basically taking care of the molding part or framing part or i should say to be precisely who take care of the implementation part so in order to read the data we have some certain scenario like add siu dft obu observation yeah message this call yep. correct yeah. i'm not going to talk about the full form because it's pretty easy and it's self explanatory but yes yeah. just understand why this is needed add is for demographics yep yep SIU is for appointments. Yep. DFT is for transaction. Yep. And we have other formats as well, like uh, ORM, which is for orders, ORU, yep. which is for results, and CCDA. this is the notes of the provider and the yeah. lastly is vxu which is the chip that is called as immunization file like uh, some child has some you know uh, insurances and they are they are covered under that certain insurance or payer so depending on that we transact the data for example we are registering a patient here so whatever is being registered let's say x patient has been registered here so patient x would be moved to ehr with the format of add caret this sign called caret yep this yep. sign called caret so add caret a04 so yep. always remember some system and here is the standard structure comes across why standards is needed so every system or every listener or sender system should have this certain uh, standard follow so that their system would be able to ingest them and trigger them onto the front end of application and system or whoever is the observer can understand the uh, data set yeah. so which is why we always so what what exactly have to still with suppose you have you are assigned with a project and you are taking care of the entire end to end uh, deployment and taking care of the yeah. issues yeah. with if in yeah. case of an implementation happening so uh, yeah. let's say there is a scenario you need to get on a call with the client to understand 
what is the requirement and how mm-hmm. you would be giving the solution to them all right yeah so there yeah. is some certain scenario that i could i could show you give me one second please yeah sure i'm just preparing a message sure sure, sure. i cannot so, i cannot uh, yeah. yeah yeah no that's fine yeah take your time it's so good <clears throat> all right so always remember when you are dealing with a client to identify the interface type what all information you should have before starting your interface implementation firstly mm-hmm. what would be the interface type in this you would be cleared whether it's demographic export or import so so can you, you just explain in that one like when you say what would be the interface what exactly that means just just like in the in the very uh... yeah so in short i could uh, I, i was planning to give them a brief information on that so yeah so what exactly interface is doing is interface is just changing the data or molding the data as yeah. per the ehr required for example okay. Mm-hmm. if i if i take this message as an example for example yeah. this 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 is a standard i mean if you see this adt cat a04 it's yeah. exactly the demographic export happening from yeah. pm to ehr okay yeah. now yeah. ehr companies or ehr organization said hey i cannot ingest this patient id into our system i need something like uh, which should have a value like 1 2 3 4 so yeah. this engine would take care of that and obviously there is coding and the structure has been needed in order to do that but yes so the entire if i understand is, if i understand you are talking about the patient id right because because every correct. ehr because let's say because the problem what we are having we, we got multiple hospital in different states okay that's true. so if that's the problem we gonna solve with master patient index going forward okay where we are okay. one id with multiple database so is that yeah. the thing that we talk about here patient id no so uh, there are two type of ids here one is internal patient id other is external patient id okay okay, okay. internal mm-hmm. patient id we uh, we you know we received that patient earlier and we have that patient demographic which is first name last name email mobile number zip code these mm-hmm. are the combination okay. that we follow to get the unicity of that pertain of the certain sure. patient sure. so once we have those information we consider that as a unique entry so for example if you have a admin access and you have you are taking care of a entire uh, server then first mm-hmm. your system will check whether this id is existing or not if that is existing it will be imported if not it will be saying it will be uh, ask you whether you want this to be ingested or not if not okay. then you can add your value if yes sure. then that would be popped up there but always okay. remember bit 3 and bit 4 are the two option bit 2 and bit 3 are the two option that would give you the internal and external patient id information okay sure sure and in order to get them universal you would need to have the master data set and that can only be possible with the uh, document kind of database like no sql mongo db and so on yeah, yeah. so if you have if you have those with the connected with aws ec2 instances then you'd be yeah. able to give them a virtual access by creating ami and they would be able to track those it's it's all together vast uh, engineering kind of but yes as a architect you should know these ideology that would work on that for example yeah. your junior is looking for some certain help from you and he is not yeah. understanding what is required in order to fix that problem so yeah. Yeah. in the merth engine or in the in the java script or in the sql server integration we have an option where we can yeah. map the internal id with the external for example this is the sender application i mean if you see this this message yeah. this will show you that the message or this patient this Do, uh, jane doy has been triggered from mesa system in the form of adt to x uh, zyx hospital 
So yeah, yeah. this is the sender system, sender application, receiver system, receiver application. Sure, 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 so sure. this entire header would give you the clarification from where the message is coming from. And your engine, this engine will read the same message saying that, okay, this is my server message and we need to ingest it. And if any programs has happened or any program has been given or condition, then imply that condition and pull only limited data out of it. Let's say oh. in some certain case, we don't need a uh, ROL segment. This, this is not required at all, but yeah. kind of saying kind of sending that. So why you would need your database to import this junks data? You should not yeah. because you have some limitation if that is not in cloud. If it's on premise, yeah. then obviously you should take care of this junk files or junk yeah. segment. So you'd need yeah. to suppress this by using that certain logic and that can only happen if you understand the HL7 deeply. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I can I, I would definitely let you know, and I would uh, uh, you know go, I would take you through entirely HL7 formats templates that is needed. Yeah. So yeah. you could simply I mean I can make you master on the HL7 side, like uh, whatever is erroring out. You just need to understand the error. I mean the error would be popped up, and you just need to understand a certain segment, and that would give you idea. Okay, this is the certain error where I need to change. You just need to change it to, for example, Victor and yeah. your system would be able to import it. So this oh. is the simple thing that you just, just need to understand. But yes, in order to get this simple thing, you should have those information handy. Okay. And uh, yeah, coming coming to the uh, architect level, I, I'm, I'm sure that you would not be implementing. But yes, architect level is very uh, well and vast. You should have at least your 80% uh, en engaged on your uh, business so that your junior would be able to implement or help on the same. You should yeah. take care of the, I mean, you would need to take care of the, you know, implementation. You need to take care of the project initiation till the yeah. go live. Yeah, that's, that's the thing, you know, because I think as I said to you, because EHR is a main thing that we are going to yeah. work on and yeah. it's a big piece of work. It's a very big transformation, right? Correct. And Correct. for me to understand all this, I want to, have a look so so this hl7 messages that you showed me yeah so when i go to a, a hospital and okay. any practice management, they capture my demographics right my okay. first name last name and my everything okay from, from there on this this format is going to be created right at the back is that right that is true that is true okay. yeah so, so in the database i'm sorry to cut you there in the database there are two type of databases one is production database, other is replicas database. Yeah. These are two, two database that is main and the other, uh, I mean, the main one is temporary database. Yeah. So this temporary database will have the data to the limited period of time. Yeah. So this temporary data would be created by this, your engine. So for example, if you use a logic to have that demographic for 30 days, for example, this, yeah. de this demographic would be available for 30 days. Yeah. So this demographic would only be available in this engine for 30 days. After that, this will be refreshed or cache would be deleted. So the engine but would be created. Be in the database, right? yeah. It will be stored in the database. Yes, it would be it would be definitely there in your production environment, either on EMR or on PM system or on business yeah. machines. So when I say business machines, this is the kind of Philips Cerner machine where we are yeah. we are dealing with packs, we are dealing with yeah. you know uh, uh, radiologies, we are dealing with uh, DICOMs. So DICOMs is also a part of HL7, and uh, that that basically works on the resources. So should I? Because the thing is that. We have the, the there is a lot of capabilities that we need to um, you know like um, bring it on like radi radiology with recent packs also will be there okay. right, as part of our project and pathology okay. as well like you know snowmet snowmet city and lonis so okay. so do you have those as well like you know because if if I'm going into this journey for HL seven do you okay. have for recent packs as well how the risk packs order is going to be taken, how is going to be implemented, you know, and all that. Yeah. Yeah. So I can, I can add that to it because that is not into the HL7 side. That is altogether a different, uh, you know, 
a topic i should say but yes okay. as you are saying i can i can add it for you and i can i can give you some ideology how that yeah. exactly been working but to be honest if you know this hl7 basics if you know the read of the message if you know the standard procedure that we follow in order to get the data ingested into the target system then i don't yeah. think so you would need to invest your time into the packs because that uh -huh. you would feel like you would feel like it's a kind of uh, you know small thing that you are doing it's better okay, you can simply implement interfaces okay. so okay so my, my now main thing is that i i totally understand hl7 is good that's that is the key priority because right. as you know the industry is going into fire and spot on fire technology now right that's every, true every, that's true even the, every you you pick any server or everything because i know when i did the non functional requirements you know when yeah. we are doing in the details i have clearly mentioned to the vendor we want to make sure that your systems are capable for the latest technology like api based fire right when yep. i when yep. i do sl7 will it also yeah. able to help me to understand the fire technology as well like you know resources and all that kind of stuff uh you yes i mean in fire i mean here you follow the standard structure or a standard uh, procedure i should say you know to yeah. like a standard i said adt carat a04 uh yeah. dft and so on in yeah. fire you need to follow the standard resources we okay. have standard okay. resources like uh, patient resource we have provider resource yes. so these are all the resources that you need to follow so this is actually the same that would be used for mapping but if yes. you understand this logic you should yes. be able to do that but yes in order to get the fire hands on ex uh, hands on expertise you need to you know implement lot of uh, interfaces or uh, you need to at least uh, go through with each and every resources because in in the in the array when we use a javascript there is a array where we can mention yeah. the attributes as well as the tags yeah. that will fetch from the message so when yeah. you go to the json file or json resources that is available for fire you will you would get to know where exactly i need to do the change and okay. that would be the same thing like you would be doing as i said you have to change it to victor because you know that issue where exactly the issue it's in pv1 segment so you need to just fix come here and fix it like the same way in the in the fire you need to go to that certain resource check the key check the attributes and just change it for example okay. like you can you you could mention like here let uh, var so this is a javascript kind of code that i'm doing let var okay. equals to a plus v that i'm using here and mm -hmm. for example i'm putting for a i'm just adding a equals to b then let true a minus b equals to 0 so this is just a short condition that i'm mentioning here okay. so for example this is the resource yeah in resource you would be getting the patient information yeah in this you would have some certain code where patient id would be mentioned yeah patient home phone number would be mentioned yeah yeah yeah, yeah. patient address would be mentioned so yeah. this all would be there and in the form of this format like yeah. patient address equals to equals to yeah patient id equals to True. Yeah. Then what is the condition? For example, yeah. A B C, like uh, Miami. I'm using any random address. Yeah. Zip code. Zip code would be four three two five eight nine. So I'm just using any random address. Yeah, so sure, sure. this is this is just the gesture how the resources or how the fire works. So okay. here you'd be dealing in the form of code of JSON JavaScript, and here you'd be following or you know you would be troubleshooting in the form of hl7 that's the only changes that we are doing because if you do with the coding that will not required any application level system you are doing from the back end you are doing from the application level you are doing from the database level if that is syncing with the database but if you are doing with the protocol you have your database ready and then you could implement your logic accordingly sure sure and so just want to understand when the hl7 message that you put it above How okay. how it is gonna be on the physical layer on the physical database, right? Doesn't doesn't matter like which which database we're using. So is yep. it gonna be under like a different format when we go into the database layer? Different fields. No. So 
for example if if this is moving if this has been triggered from yeah. pm to ehr yeah. okay yeah. yeah and you have some certain suppression here for example yeah. you don't need this certain nky segment which is next to kin next yeah. to kin yeah. is especially where the patient is not able to make the payment then they can yeah. you know reach out to them so yeah. for example you don't want this so this would be suppressed so always remember for any transformation for any implementation we should have a valid msh header event which is actually the evn segment which could inform you about the status when this has been transferred what time exactly it has taken in order to move it yeah. patient id it's a pit segment where you have all the patient information like this is the address this is the patient first name last name this is the date of birth this is the gender and so on this is the mobile number so and this is the pv2 which is uh, encountering part when the patient visit to a provider or uh, uh, to a practice for a treatment then an encounter would happen so that encounter would be considered as pv1 segment where you would be getting what exactly the treatment what exactly the issue for which the patient has visited and who was the provider what is the yeah. provider id and what is yeah. the time when this patient has visited yeah so if you see this one this time this event and this date should be same yeah and is this just because this is the adt this is the patient or i'm sorry this is the demographic export that we are doing yeah but yeah. if yeah. this would be in like in the form of siu s12 which is a fresh appointment then this would be same then this date would be different because future appointment would be in the future dates yeah yeah sure sure and sure. always uh, i mean i mean you as a architect you should know what is migration mm -hmm. what is uh, integration yep yeah. and lastly what is testing so in testing we have lot of testing manual testing yeah unite testing yeah and record testing yeah or you could okay. you could also mention it's transformation testing yeah so this testing basically confirm whether this message has been triggered is received or not for example you have ordered something mm -hmm. you have ordered something from amazon yeah okay so if you have ordered something you would receive a receipt as a confirmation yeah which could confirm that hey your order has been processed and so and so date would be needed in order to get them delivered to your address or register address so that is called as ack messages in hl7 or in in healthcare is called correct acknowledge message this is also a type of hl7 format or i should say message event which which yeah. uh, which which uh, identified at ack this stand yeah, for yeah. acknowledgement so if this says acknowledgement positive yeah then your transformation has been done completed oh. if yeah. this is negative then it is errored out due to some connection issue for example count issue for example or maybe the patient id that we are using it not correct in order to import this so this this is the this is the basic region that you should first check so i would also give you some troubleshoot idea so you could you could do it faster compared to your team because everyone is reaching out to architect just to get the information faster or resolution faster right so i would yeah, i would yeah. uh, i would help you on that as well and uh, that would help you to you know understand the message flow and help your team in in a fast manner so they could they could do as much as implementation they can do so when it comes to integration because yep. actually it is in my pipeline that i have to i'm i'm going to learn mulsoft because that yep. is going to our main integration platform is going to be okay so, so is that the one that you're talking about 
in when you said integration like it so yeah so when i say integration i would uh, i would be using a uh, merth engine that is the widely used engine in the entire health healthcare and uh, yeah. this is taken care by next gen and uh, yeah. in in this you would be having uh, uh, html in this you would be having xml and this you would be having json so whatever your mulsup can do this can do faster because this has all the information in a one plate in mulsup you should have idea on java java script and so so if you use mulsup you would need to understand the basic java because java has some certain attributes that is needed in order to pass some certain comment in the engine yeah sure yeah, yeah. so yeah i can i can i can let you know what exactly the tabs are what are needed yes, sure. in both the thing but yes uh, i would i would uh, give you a brief information using merth engine only so that okay. you would be able to understand the integration transformation part and testing part how this is tested how this is going to happen how the message yeah. moving so when i when i say the interface phases first it is kick off kick off is the main thing that you would need to convince your client and get idea on interface type mm -hmm. so once you have this information you would be mm -hmm. able to use your logic mm -hmm. so once you get the logic you would be able to do the migration migration is nothing but whatever data that they have in their legacy system mm -hmm. whatever they have any data set from their legacy system they want i mean obviously they would have some certain contract for example 2 years 3 years so yeah. where there is a some certain a uh, dimension of data set is required which is scd1 scd2 scd3 so this is nothing but it's a slow changing dimension sc1 deals with most recent data sc2 deals with deals with only 2 years or 3 years data limited years past years data and this deals with unlimited data so you would need to convince your or you need to get the confirmation in a doc sign or in a in a contract whenever you have a you know sync up with your client so what exactly the data set or for how many years they want us to move the data from their legacy system so if they have the backup it's fine if not then i mean i'm i'm giving you the entire you know gesture of the project so you would understand so Because this all information you would be needing yeah because the current yeah. state is that i can give you high level the current state is that Yes, they do have that capability for the practice management. They are using, okay. um, you know, vendor. But it, okay. right now, from the EHR point of view, it is all paper based. Okay, so that is the whole transformation going on. They are running okay. on ASP because they have all patient data, a patient chart in a paper okay. format. Okay. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so there will be a separate project running to move okay. that and everything into a digital format. You know, soon. So. Got it. No, no, but but it's good to understand. You you give us yep. a very good overview because I I didn't know about SC two, SC D one, two, three. I didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is also required because this is the main thing that you would be taking care. Of. At the end of the day, they are paying for data set. If the data is not there, why they want us to pay? And yeah. uh, you, I mean, obviously, you need to make sure that whatever the contract is mentioned, that data is whole and so loaded into the new system. And you could use any ETL tool like you could use Informatica. You could use uh, snap logic you could use talent i have mastery on that as well but yes this is yeah. this is the basic knowledge that uh, you should have in order to get them into the sync and uh, they could also validate validate so in the validation once you move the data set we have different kind of validation so yeah. like we have excel validation we have yeah. uh, uh, talent i'm sorry uh, we have tableau validation yeah. we have power bi validation so if you are using any engineer then you yeah. should or he should be able to identify the data set because uh, you need to give them a confirmation that x number was the patient this is the total count of patient this is the total count of provider and we have moved something for example 
everything equals to x and y. Then you need to give them a summary in which you need to mention the status, whether it is matching or not. If not matching, then what was the error? So, so this is the just the basic structure. Are you talking about data analy analytics and all? Is it? Yeah, this is all together. I mean, when a project is assigned, I'm giving you a starting phase, how the data is moving, how the contract is done. And once everything okay. is done, what I mean, imp interface implementation would happen only the project is confirmed then, right? Yeah, so sure. I'm just giving you the entire thread, how the project yeah. is moved, how the project is planned, how the uh, sequence is created. So this is good to know. So you would have those uh, ideology and you could implement. So for example, let's say if customer come back to us saying that, hey, uh, I just received one year of data instead of two years because I had a contract with your client or with your sale person. Let's example, James, and uh, it was not properly moved. Can you check? So it would be escalated at the starting level, I mean, at the end level when the project is moved to live already. So obviously yeah. that would escalate it to you and you'd need to do RC and all then yeah. you, you'd need to understand the entire thread. So this is just the gesture where exactly you can check, how exactly you can check. So that it also, this is the bonus that I'm giving you. So you would have those yeah, information as well. Yeah, so definitely, definitely. Because as I, as I said to you, Ranjit, like, you know, for me, yeah. I, I don't want to go into technical details, to be honest. I really yep. need to yep. because if you're implementing the EHR, you, you should know all these kind of things. Otherwise the vendor can make you fool. You know what I mean? Yep. Yep. So that's, all. so that's what my whole area of focus is going to be. Okay. Okay. So, and uh, yeah, I'm sorry to cut you there. Just for a quick information, like I have worked with almost uh, all EHRs. Okay. The only reason I wanted to know, like, why why I ask you on the call, what is the EHR that you'd be dealing with? It's just because whether it's a LIA system or EHR system, if it's a EHR system, then for every EHR system, there is a patient merge option that you need to understand. So I would, what I would do is I would first give you the uh, ideology on the EHR side. Then I will go to the HR, uh, HL7 and fire informations. And sure. then I will give you the integration side because yeah, I, yeah, I know that you would need. Yeah. That's good. That's good. No, no, definitely. I think, see, I, I will tell you right now, there are two bigger vendors. See, like right now still there is a, um, we're still waiting for the response. As I said, it's the RFP stage at the moment. And we are still okay. waiting. We have given the NFRs, right? We are still waiting for the NFR responses. But I can tell okay. you, there are big vendors like Server. Okay, one is the Server. And okay. the other one is Epic. Okay. okay. But okay. I like I like Epic more because Epic Epic got a hell lot of maturity level yep. in each. That's case. true. That's okay. true. Yeah. And yeah. And I will I will be surprised if they go to other you know, you know other one, but it's all come down to the cost. Okay. Got it. So that's what I want to understand. Let Let's see if we go to Epic or Cerner. I want to know the end to end how the EHR solution gonna look like because as I said, company is not matured at this moment. Okay. Mm -hmm. So as a as an enterprise architect, I want to drive. Yep. Yes, there are a lot of project manager and program manager business analysis assigned to this project. But as a program architect, I have to know end-to-end -end, all the implementation, how it should Yep, yep. That's totally understandable. Yep, that makes sense as well. So uh, no problem, Sandeep. I would, I would definitely try my level best to make you on, uh, make you mastery on this. And yes. I, I can, I can assure that that would be taken care. And also coming okay. to the message type, I could, I could definitely give you some shortcuts or trick and trick that you could simply just see this message. Oh, this is for that. This is for that. This is for you know, some certain expertise that we, we would be doing. No, that's good because, because Ranjit, I think, I think that is also good because you have given me not only HS7, you have also told me about this, um, you know, kickoff yeah. migration, contractual agreement that I have to be aware of. You know, some other Correct. thing, it is not only about HS7 I have to limit for. That is good because I need to know end to end what other stakeholders I have to deal with. You know what I mean? Correct. Like, yep. like from the building, how can I make, because billing coding is very complex in the, in the, that's industry. true. Did you know that? So I, I agree. Because yep. right now they are, they are they are just crying right now the way they have to code it so we have to make their life easy too right so it yep. would be good, yep. good to understand your point of view as well you know uh, how, yep. how we can do it. Yeah. yep so the i'm just giving you the uh, i was just giving you the you know uh, the cycle of the implementation or cycle of the contract how is it happening how the data That's is it. moving 
and sure, for sure. example let's say at some certain point if client is not happy with your system for example like if they are you know if they have a contract of four or five years and if they face like okay i'm, I'm getting challenge on this i'm i'm facing right. challenge while doing this movement or while changing some certain fields then it's better wait let's let's move on from this to another software then in yeah. that case you need to do a deconversion so that yeah. is the that is the same part you need to give them a backup by deconversioning or the data that you have in your master mm -hmm. table or master database sure. you could say sure, sure, so sure, this sure. is just the basic ideology that i have given you and mm -hmm. yes I, I i i would definitely make sure that this all would be covered yeah, definitely. Because as I said, you know, like I, I need to understand the whole project end to end would be good as well. You know, the whole life cycle of the HR implementation as well. That would be good if you could explain me that as well, you know. Sure, sure. Yeah. All right. Do no, you have no. any question? No, so. Yeah.